Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachakwadash, and double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to all you walking out there who pushing this word with all truth and sincerity, and as well as to all you believers out there who believe in the gospel. And it's the brother Kwara Abad from the gym at Houston camp. You know, real briefly, um, I was about to go on a little, uh, you know, a little Sunday morning, you know, jog, you know, a little walk, you know, listen to the apostles' uh, camp from yesterday. And uh, as I was sitting in my uh, my car about to get out, I was just doing some meditating, and it's to the point that you know, um, us as the believers, you know, as Yahweh Shai said, the true worshippers. You know, if Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, we understand that a time go come when we gonna actually receive spiritual power. You know, and it may not be all of us, you know, but uh, you know, some brothers, a good majority of brothers, however the Lord um, you know, have his uh, story written to go, but we understand that some of the believers will receive spiritual power. You know, yes, power to do um things out of the ordinary, you know, strength speed and, and power that they can't die we gonna yeah we gonna witness that it's like we see on those x-men movies so on and so forth right that's out the scriptures man you know he, even king david in his time he had a, a form of power this man was able to break bowls of steel with his forearm leaping over ancient walls you know but again a, a time coming and we understand that but what i want to touch on in this lesson is that believe it or not but we already have a form of spiritual power. We already, the Lord already blessed us with a small portion of spiritual power before we raising, you know, giving sight. And that's the, that's what I want to kind of touch on. We already, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Shai, raising the dead. <laughs> we already giving sight to the blind, man, by way of pushing out this word. Now think about that. Although it seems simple, that all we doing is preaching on YouTube. On the highways and hedges, on Odyssey. But that's a big deal when you look out into the world. Because of the things that the, the Lord got his men saying in the earth, it have brought forth the end of the world. Matthew 24 and verse 14 said, When this gospel of the kingdom be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, then shall the end come. And with us pushing out this word here in these last days, it have brought our people back to life. Specifically those who are the elect. We was once dead bodies. Guess what? We was raised up by hearing men preach. So those men who taught us had a form of spiritual power by raising us from the dead. Spiritually dead, as it says in Proverbs 21, that those who wander out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. But now we have been brought to life since we have received this truth understood it accepted it repented and now we're getting down with it now we are preaching and teaching and now we are taking part right in what other men been doing and that's raising people from the dead man israelites giving sight to the blind and that, again that's a big deal once you think about that let me roll up these windows this car is passing i'm gonna get into the um scriptures here in a few but again it's kind of like a little impromptu you see you know, it's like, hold on. You know, but look, our people, we didn't know who he was for hundreds of years, even thousands of years, maybe, man. But just from this word being pushed, we coming back to knowing, man, we are the sons of the living power. We are the children of Israel, the sons of Israel. We are the next rulers of the world to come. Our Lord, Jehovah Shai is a so-called dark skinned man. That's giving life to us, man. We understand prophecy, the truth. We understand who these nations is. We understand the heavenly father, the God of heaven and the earth, the one who always been is a so-called dark-skinned man. A so Come on, man. So don't take it light that we just pushing out the word. It ain't just pushing out the word. This is, again, a form of spiritual power, spiritually bringing people back from the, from the, from the dead, man. And eventually, we know as time goes on, the Lord going to uh, endow us with that physical power. But let's start here. It shouldn't be long. In the book of Acts, 
This is uh, some Yahweh Shai said, right? Talking to the disciples of old, but this, this, we included in this once we read this. But it's the book of Acts, chapter 1, and I'm going to start at 7. This is Yahweh Shai speaking. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Because the disciples asked, and you go a verse above, they said, Lord, at this time you're going to get a kingdom to Israel again? And how shall I tell them, look, that's for the heavenly father to worry about that. You don't worry about that. That's just in my father's power. But watch what else he say. Verse 8, it says, but ye shall receive power. So don't worry about the power my father got and understand you're going to receive your own power. Your own form of power. It says, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit is come upon you. Now, again, although we ain't, and well, I don't want to say we ain't doing physical miracles because, hey, brothers have done miracles on a small level that we ain't putting on the YouTube, that we ain't showing out in public. You see? Things that the Lord heard us and maybe healed somebody or, you know. So, yes, we are doing things at a low level right now as far as physical power. But the Holy Spirit is upon us right now. It said you're going to receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. In order for us to understand these scriptures, we have to have the Holy Spirit. As it's saying with it is wisdom of Solomon, that those who change their life around because they received the Holy Spirit from the Heavenly Father. So understanding that we can understand these scriptures, you know, we can um, we agree and believe in what's being taught. That's part of the Holy Spirit. So since we have the Holy Spirit, we also have a portion of power. But let's read on. Acts 1 and 8 again, it says, but ye shall receive power after that. The Holy Spirit has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria. And we can read about that in the book of Acts and the Gospels. The apostles was witnesses preaching and teaching in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria. But this is the thing. Yahweh Shai said again right here. And unto the uttermost parts of the earth. That's us. The furthest apostle who traveled was Apostle Paul back then, but he ain't never come to the Americas. He ain't never go to Alaska and, and South America. No, that's us to the uttermost parts of the earth. So this, this is for us as well. This is speaking to us as well. So after we have received power, or we receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon us, seeing we at the uttermost parts of the earth, of the earth but let's get this word power in a blue letter that we have received is g1411 g1411 is dynamis which they sound like dynamic power but check this out it says power for performing miracles so this Holy Spirit that we have received gave us the ability through Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, the power to perform miracles. And again, the Lord got us pushing out his word and through this word is raising dead Israelites up and bringing them back to life. Let's get this in Ezekiel 37. But you see, we have power to perform miracles. You know, Ezekiel 37, I'm going to start at one. It says, the hand of Yahweh was upon me and carried me out in the midst of, carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. So this is Ezekiel getting a vision, seeing the valley full of bones, which symbolic where we at right now, the our greatest captivity. Yet the second Egypt, America, full of bones, full of dead bodies. Before this truth was spread, we all was living like niggas and Mexicans. You see, smoking and whatever else we was doing out in this world. Dead bodies, not knowing the Lord at all, not knowing no type of truth, not, not knowing what's lawful to eat, ain't understanding repentance as we was, or probably was in Jesus' name. Again, dead bodies. Not even close to being meat for repentance at the time. You see? But as we go, go on, pushing out this word brought us back to life. And ultimately, that's Yahweh shot that breath. You see? But it says, verse 2, And he caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many 
in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. Very dry, no water. With water symbolic for this truth. Very, not just dry. <laughs> Jake was very dry over here, man. You know, going to school in school uniform and, you know, come on, man, doing school projects on <laughs> Josh Washington. Yeah, very dry. It says, and he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, oh, Yahweh, thou knowest. So look, even Ezekiel has say, I don't know, Lord. <laughs> you know, because from the looks of it, before this truth, it would have never seemed like we had a chance to get out of captivity. It wouldn't have seemed as if we had even a chance to get under the oppression of the so-called white man. You see? But now we understand through this word, yes, we living. And it is not, not a chance. It's going to happen. You know? But it says, and he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones. Hear the word of Yahweh. That's that's what they need. The word it says, "Thus saith Yahweh, power unto these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and I will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am that I am Yahweh." So I prophesied as I was commanded. He pushed out the word of truth. It says, and as I prophesied, there was a noise and behold, a shaking and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when so we come as his word being pushed out, this is the beginning of us coming together as a people bone to his bone, you know, getting ourselves in order. In other words, it says. And when I beheld and lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, right? Our people started realizing we are the Israelites. Judah, right? Oh, the you is Gad, you Reuben, Ishakar. It says, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Because you still have some of our people. Yeah, they know the Israelites like Kyrie Irving, Kanye West. Yeah, they know the Israelites. They got the bones and the skin and the sinews, but it's not the full truth. That full truth is what the Lord got his apostles and elders uh, and prophets pushing out of Great Millstone. The full truth, man. That's the breath. You see? Even some of these other camps. Yeah, they got the skin, the sinews, the bones together. They know who they are, but they might not believe in Yahweh Shah. Then you're not really alive. They might not believe in all the prophets, the MOTB, then you don't have the breath. But the point is, still with this word, it brought them back to somewhat of living again hope you see hope man this truth gives our people hope that's why it's called the gospel the good news but let's continue reading because it says then said he unto me prophesy unto the wind prophesy son of man and say to the wind thus said Yahweh power come from the four winds a hey, unto the uttermost parts of the earth right that we're going to have this power. So it says, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, the word continuing to go out. It says, and the breath came into them. And that's the true worshipers getting the full truth, coming back to all the way back to life. You see? It says, so I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, which is the Holy Spirit, all right, and the breath came into them, the way wisdom, knowledge, and they lived. So through this word being pushed out, we not as it's not us, it's Yahweh and Yahweh Shah by way of the Holy Spirit using us to push out their word, bringing people back to life. So again, marvel not, but we already have a form of spiritual power. We pushing out this word, and people who never met us changing their lives, repenting. In fear and trembling because of stuff we sin. Think about that. And again, it's not us. You know, Yahweh Shah said in John 17 and 20, though, he said that you're going to have some who he also pray for, who going to believe on him through what the prophets are teaching. Scripture say, how can they hear or believe without a teacher? 
So don't take this as a light thing. Speaking of myself, first and foremost, this is a great duty that the Lord got us doing, man. Standing up and boldness in the face of the world, in the face of our oppressors, in the face of our people as well, and these nations pushing out the word of truth. And in doing so, it's bringing the nation of Israel back to life, man. Whether it's two thirds and they just finding out the Israelites and they know Oh, it's the elect who finding out the Israelites and getting the full truth and repenting in the name of Yahweh Shah. You, you know, and walking with the Lord, man. But this is a big deal. So big, it's changing the world. Craig, <laughs> not just the city, but the world, man. This message is changing the world. Again, that's a form of spiritual power. So, some. You saying to come into existence as spiritual power. Things you saying is go usher in the next world to come. That spiritual power. You know. Come on, man. Let's get this. This Baruch. And like I said, it was you know in part two. That's you know pretty much what I want to touch on. Like we already you know bringing people back from the dead, man, spiritually. You know, healing people. That's already happening spiritually. Man, I think it's a scripture. Let me see. Hold on. Second measure. Let me see. Let me see. Okay, here it is. No, it's not a uh, second measure. It's um, Wisdom of Solomon. Yep, this Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 16. And I'm going to start at verse 12, straight to the point. Wisdom of Solomon 16 and 12. It says, For it was neither herb nor mollifying plaster that restored them to health. So look at when you follow on a Dr. Sabi diet that, that brought you back to health, that gave you life again. It wasn't no herbs that we took. It wasn't no balm, you know, that we put on. It wasn't getting medicine from Esau that brought us back to life as a people, man. But let's find out what brought us back to life, what made us healthy again, restored us. It says, Wisdom of Solomon 16 and 12, for it was neither herb nor mollifying plaster that restored them to health. It says, but thy word, O Yahweh, which healeth all things. Just preaching. Man, come on, just preaching. That's a, that's, that's a big deal. The Lord called us and gave us this opportunity to push his word, man. That's why we understand 144,000 will be greatly rewarded in the next world to come. Because if, as they say, if it, if it was easy, everybody would do it. That's the point. Everybody ain't doing what the Lord got us doing. Talk about a big deal, man. Changing the world. Come on. That's a form of spiritual power. Giving hope to a people that ain't have hope. You know, but let's get this in Baruch and I'll probably, uh, I'll wind it down. I got something else in my spirit that I want to get. I think it's in Ezra. Let me see. Bear with me. Let me see. Let me see. All right. Check this out. So there's the book of Ezra, chapter nine and eight. And this when we uh, went back and started rebuilding the temple. Ezra 9 and 8, it says, And now for a little space, grace have been showed from Yahweh our power. And it's that little space we're in, that little season Esau got the rule. We have received grace in this little time. It says, And now for a little space, grace have been showed from the Lord our power to leave us a remnant to escape and to give us a nail in his holy place. In other words, we ain't no more departing from the, the temple of the Lord. It says, but this is the point. And give us a nail in his holy place that our God may lighten our eyes and give us a little reviving in our bondage. So right now, while we are in bondage, the Lord have revived us, risen us back up, gave us life again. And it came all by the word, man. And that's the point. That's the point of the lesson. By the word. Let's end it off on um, with that Baruch. Baruch 5 on how we came gathered together. It's Baruch 5. And the thing about that, you got people across the four corners, brothers and sisters that never even met, but we agree 
different ages, different lifestyles, but we agree on this one thing. Come on, man. But it's Baruch chapter five, and I'm going to start at five, and I end it. It says, O Jerusalem. It says, Arise, O Jerusalem, and stand on high, and look about toward the east, and behold thy children gathered from the west, because they the truth started over here in the west, so it says, gathered from the west unto the east. How? By the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the remembrance of the Most High. So that's how we are gathering together again as a nation. We don't have to take up arms. We don't have to for, for, uh, form a military. You see, all just about pushing out this word is a form of power that brought the nation of Israel back, man. And that's why fear falling on these enemies because they see we rising across the four corners, different languages. You see? But we agree. That's power, man. That's power. It says, um, right, arise, O Jerusalem, and stand on high and look about toward the east. And behold, thy children come gathered from the west unto the east by the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in, re in the remembrance of the Most High. You see that? So I'm going to end it, you know, I just wanted to touch on that, man. It's going to is actually power in this word. You know, oh, and spiritual power in what we're doing. Like the, the scripture saying Hebrews 4 and 12, that the word of the Most High is quick and powerful. You see, quick and powerful. You know, and I think it's uh, Yahweh Shai, Apostle Paul, they said how the word don't come in, in speech only, but also in power, man. Roughly paraphrasing. You see? But with that, I'm going to end it. I'm going to try to find that scripture. But it's power, and I end it. Yep. Yep. First Corinthians four and twenty says, "For the kingdom of the Most High is not in word only, but in power." <laughs> so we ain't just speaking, but it is bringing forth and showing power in the earth, man. But hey, Lord, willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praises and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashimi Yahushai, Bahashim Rachakodash, double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to all you out there who pushing this word with all truth. And sincerity, and as well as all you believers out there who believe in on the gospel, keep fighting, keep pushing. We're almost out of here. And with that, shalom.